again more rights are being given to foster parents caregivers and custodial parents than what is being given to a non-custodial parent if the perpetrator who is the custodial parent has a right to be heard then the non-custodial parent who is not the perpetrator should be heard too this is not the case it seems in this situation this would not be a concern though if I knew of any rights that protected non-custodial parents but so far I have not been able to find any that does the district courts shall have original jurisdiction of any action in the nature of mandamus to compel an officer or employer of the United States or any agency thereof to perform a duty owed to the plaintiff. DCFS Rule 3.0.1 a states when a child is removed from the care of a custodial parent the placing worker shall explore whether the non-custodial parent would be a suitable caregiver for the child if the department determines that the placement with any identified relative is not in the child's best interest or that the relative does not meet that requirement to be a, a relative caregiver as set forth in department rules or by statute the department must document the basis for that decision and maintain the documentation in the child's case file if pursuant to the department rules any person files an administrative appeal of the department's decision not to place a child with a relative it is the department's burden to prove that the decision is cons consistent with the child's best interest if the department determines the efforts to identify and locate relatives would be futile or inconsistent with the child's best interest the department shall document the basis of its determination and maintain the documentation in the child's case file. If the department determines that an individual or a group of relatives are inappropriate to serve as visitation resources or possible placement resources, the department shall document the basis of the determination and maintain the documentation in the child's case file. According to DCFS Procedure 302 Appendix B, older caregivers, anyone over the age of 65 must be evaluated by the Illinois Department of Aging within 45 days of taking custody of a child in these situations. According to these guidelines, it is imperative that the workers evaluate older caregiver families utilizing a lifespan approach. Legal com competence and capacity are similar but not synonymous. Competence is determined by a court of law where capacity is determined through clinical assessment. Does the older caregiver have the capacity to meet the child's needs until he or she reaches the age of 18. It is the responsibility of the department to make placement decisions and or changes based on the best interest of the child regardless of the older caregiver's rights to self-determination. With the DCFS IDOA Intergovernmental Agreement IDOA and DCFS delineate their respective roles and responsibilities upon the initial placement or as early as possible in the life of the case if a caregiver is age 65 or older and the use of the lifespan approach suggests that given the age of the child and the age of the caregiver it is not likely that the caregiver that the caregiver will be able to care for the child until the age of 18 the placing or permanency worker shall conduct a diligent search in accordance to administrative procedures number 22 
diligent search to identify and locate viable relatives to care for the child until the age of 18. The diligent search shall include but not be limited to non-custodial parents, maternal and paternal relatives, child entered collaterals, children four years and older, if developmentally appropriate with their family, school, church, synagogue, mosque, and neighborhood. The child's protective specialist or permanency worker must obtain from the older caregiver a completed and signed CFS 600-3 consent for release of information in order to facilitate the exchange of information between DCFS, IDOA, and potential service providers. The DCFS or POS worker shall also give to the older caregivers and CFS 1050-86 grandparents and other relatives raising assistance for themselves or those in the home for whom they provide care e.g. spouse, parent, sibling, or disabled adult children including the children placed by DCFS, POS, each DCFS region office shall maintain a list of resources and provide DCFS and POS workers with instructions regarding how to access them. 20 ILCS 505-5C A 20 ILCS 505-7-B 20 ILCS 505-5 slash 2 705 ILCS 405-1 slash 5 2 A 20 ILCS 505 slash 5 1-1 From what I've found out and what I know about government, the only branch that represents me and is supposed to protect my rights is the judiciary branch. This branch of government is the only branch of government where I can stand before the judge innocent of charges, innocent or charged with a crime and speak to the court. I am a citizen of the state and country who knows what the meaning of sovereignty is. I give up certain freedoms in exchange for certain protections from my government. These protections have been infringed upon and violated. I hope that these issues can be discussed and I can have a better understanding of what is taking place here. Thank you for your time. A response would be appreciated, please. Sincerely, Roger Hansen. So, that in full is everything that I sent on my appeal for court decision in the Juvenile Court of Illinois in Franklin County, Illinois. And that is a lot that I'm going to have to break down into three pieces but like I said man if you guys want to respond to it respond to it and let me know what you think about it because that's what I had to go through and if you guys want to talk about something let me know